Welcome to the final episode of season six of The Balanced Voice. We wanna give a very special thank you to Fliplock for sponsoring our podcast. Without the ongoing support of Fliplock, we would not be able to provide you with these balanced conversations that offer real solutions about today's most pressing issues. This season, Renya and Jin covered many different topics, including school safety, LGBTQ safety, post-incarceration challenges, and so much more. Thank you for joining us this season. Please share our podcast with your friends and let us know what subjects you'd like us to cover in season seven. So season six, we had fun. Season six, we had fun. We had fun. We did. There were some, so there were some guests on this season whose statements I I like completely disagreed with, but you know, I keep I agree. quiet. Yeah. Um, because I we want to listen. Well, but you're good. Some, some, but I was good. You're so good. You're so good, mm-hmm. um, but it's hard when you when you're you are so thankful that guests have taken the time to be with us. Right, but you're they're saying stuff and you're like I don't agree with that. But I have to learn. I think I'm still learning. Learning what? How to how to have healthy debate and conflict about something you don't disagree with? I'm so used to my position to just be quiet and listen. Yeah, and then take what I need to take for the organization to keep working. Yeah, and not entering a discussion on anything outside of that. And well, so I think that's why we complement each other well. This right? is a different sphere. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. I'll because leave it to you. Well, yeah, and I think we, I think we also, you have to take a position as crime subject because we have to be bipartisan, nonpartisan. No, take don't take a side um, as an organization, so we can serve the entire population. From my perspective, although I sit on the board, I think um, my goal has always been: let me have good, healthy conflict and debate when mm-hmm. I don't agree with somebody, so mm-hmm. that I can eventually get to understand the other side, yeah, the other perspective, which is so important. Which is so important. Which we've lost the art of doing. We have. No one knows how to do that anymore. No, because everybody just wants to fight right. and say their position is the right one. But what was interesting is through the conversation, so we we focused a lot on school safety. Anna Rager came in with a tool, Fliplock. She's, you know, supporting the podcast. She's done incredible work, her and her husband. We went through like YMCA, camp safety. We talked about Goya Cares. Mm-hmm. Um, Jenna Fondren came in and talked about schools. And we we did a deep dive into the LGBTQ issue. Um Sam Chapman, who's one of my mm. favorite. I mean, he's been on the podcast Amazing multiple guy. times. Um, and then OG One, which was so exciting. I had a thought about that on the way over. I'm like, God, can, if, can you imagine if we could have programs where everyone that post incarceration comes out and says, "How in the world am I going to change the community or yes. help the community not have to go through what I go through, what I've gone through?" I just and so that inspiring. We have the infrastructure to support them yes. because every time you said they come out with fifty dollars. Right. A train, a bus ticket into the middle of town, $50, and then good luck. Yeah. When we know that there are a lot of issues that have not been dealt with. Right. Totally. So it's weird because we are a public safety organization. We're a tough on crime organization. But I always say this. We are a an organization that cares about uh, making sure children never enter the cradle to cr- prison pipeline. That's why we're so active in the schools. We want to make sure that people get fair and just punishment. Um, we want rehabilitation for them while they're serving their sentences. We we want to pour into the prison population because we want these people to come out and function in the community. Well, and I still think there's t- lots of people that are incarcerated. That if we had lo- if we looked at those nonviolent crimes now. We would be like, okay, we wouldn't put them in prison for, for years for, for that. this long, yeah. Or, or, or we would really acknowledge that once, the, like, a misdemeanor or some type of nonviolent crime was created, d- done, and then you understand the cycle of them losing their job because they yeah. sat in jail uh-huh. and like programs around that. I think there's a still a lot to be done, and I think there's a lot of empathy that we need to have on. Not all these people are, you know. Or people that will continue to reoffend if we just have the right programs, which requires conversations that are difficult to have. Conversations of money. Oh yeah. Well, that's the other thing. I mean, I, I look at OG One, and I feel like I wish more organizations were funding him and his work because I think he's getting to the heart of some of these major issues that are often go overlooked, like the role of men in these young men lives. He shared his own story. Mm-hmm. He mm-hmm. was lacking a father figure. His mom was amazing she's amazing 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 doing everything humanly possible for a mom to do a single mom to do and doing it really well but he didn't have the father figure he had learning differences reading differences that made it hard for him to stay in school there were a lot of issues but it had a lot of vulnerabilities yes which made him well and i target and and almost every if you look at all the different people that we talk to and you talk about the youth that are involved in you know it, it when you talk about the youth in these different scenarios or situations 
it always rings clear that these kids, this champions, they need they champions. Need, you've always said that too. I, and it is so, I mean, wh whether you're talking to OG1 and talking yeah. about the community that's, that's you know, so that we can stop incarceration of these young men, so that it, if a champion would have been great. If you look at the LGBTQ community mm -hmm. that we talked about, Barrett and Andrew basically mm -hmm. said, look, they just need someone that, that loves them and understands them and will talk to them, right? When we looked at... Uh, what happened with Alicia Acuna yes. and, and those kids understanding and having somebody to talk to when when situations like you know arm, firearms being brought into the school and the school being shot up like that they just need someone to talk to as well as with safe schools and I mean just I all mean Goya Cares and YMCA are stepping in as champions totally when you think about it totally. Crime Stoppers who are safe school institute we're stepping in as champions right but let's go back because we mm. just came off the cusp of talking to um, to Sam Chapman and Amy Neville. <laughs> and their attorney, Matt Bergman, about the lawsuit they're filing against Snapchat. We'll follow this all summer, and as it unfolds, what are your thoughts? What's going to happen? Can you sue the social media giants? Look, TikTok's being banned right now in, what, two dozen yeah, states? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Twitter's about to be banned, and you're seeing some of that no. about the European Union. Yeah, they're saying that, of course, they think it's because, it, you know, it was only one side of a story being told or something like that. So the European, somebody in Europe is trying to say Twitter can't be over here either. So wow. can we sue them? So remember, we passed that bill, FOSTA-SESTA, and that is, was to, for, for, or, for tech firms who knowingly facilitate yeah. the trafficking of children. Mm -hmm. I would also say the knowingly facilitate the drug trafficking to children. Um, would hopefully apply there. So should they be held accountable? Absolutely. Yeah. If they can do AI, machine learning, oh, and all these- Don't even get me started. They, you know they can yes. come up with algorithms. Come on. We talk about COVID, and I remember we were home. Everybody was staying safe at home, which is good. But I'd start writing C-O, if I put a V in, before I got to the I- You had everything coming up. Pop up yeah, alerts, yeah. COVID, be careful, warning signs, precautions. You better write the right stuff. So I, the- algorithms are there they can catch what they, they want to catch that's the right. point is and the surgeon general's um 25 page report says we wish social media giants would actually design these platforms so the first entrance wasn't first interest wasn't money and eyeballs yeah but rather the health and well-being of the users uh, mainly children you know, um, this one's really sensitive to me i'm this week um on june 2nd i will uh be there for the burial of my cousin's son. Mm. He lost um, second second son. He's he, they lost a set of twins, and so uh, I'm not saying it's specifically fentanyl. But we believe the second one was, but within a year of each other, and so I and everyone you talk to, I, I was talking to somebody else on Facebook about something. They reached out me out to me. I feel like everybody knows someone somebody. that is dying has died from fentanyl, and so. It's, it is an epidemic, it is a crisis, and I just think we need to continuously talk about this conversation. There is a war, I keep saying, and I'm it's curious what you guys think. We, I really do feel like there is a war being waged against our children, whether it is, um, you know, social media addictions and content being thrown at them, which can be very, very harmful to fentanyl-laced pills yeah. and, and all of these products being pushed to them. I really do think there is a war being waged against our children. Totally. Sam Chapman agreed. Right. I agree. And, but the other thing, too, is parents have and got I'm to so change sorry. their parenting. I'm so sorry, Aww, Jennifer. Thanks. The worst. Thanks. I'm, you know, I'm just going up there to support him, and I wasn't able to make it to the first one. I just think, you know, and I, I didn't know him very well, the, the, you know, this young boy very well. My son had been there a couple of summers, but it's just, I, I, I don't even, I don't, man, I, this mama, like, this mom and this daddy, how like, you, how do I you? Don't, I don't. How do you move forward? But I think we're faith based, so hopefully we can we can do that. But I, I look, you have to change your parenting. If you are telling your child it's my way or the highway, or if you are being just absolutely demanding, and I'm not saying you shouldn't discipline, mm -hmm. but or have I always boundaries or, or have boundaries. You absolutely have to have yeah. them, but in reason on the way you communicate it to your kids. Because if you keep saying it's my way or the highway, the highways has the highway has pimps, the highways has drug dealers. That highway is not safe for your kids. And young kids today can actually earn money separate from their parents. So that whole, you know, it's our way or the highway worked when we had no other option but to set- Or they wouldn't give you your allowance because you yes. did something. But now Done. I can, I can jump, not me, but most people can jump on OnlyFans or they can, you know, start selling content online or becoming an influencer. It doesn't take a lot to they do can, that. They can make money and they can Venmo each other. And yes. They can so different. we've got to be super, super- um, 
intentional in our parenting, which is so different, but it requires a lot of conversation. Speaking of those conversations, we asked the most ridiculous and awkward and for me, uncomfortable com- questions to Andrew and Barrett yes. talking about LG. I mean, I was dying with some of the questions, but we were asking questions that people ask us. And remember, we're a different generation. I grew up um, with We Are the World and AIDS and, you know, kind of understanding this whole community very differently than the way my kids mm. look at it. It's completely different. I mean, it's changed in the last 10 years. Totally different lens. So we asked some some pretty, I don't know, ridiculous questions, but they were so graceful in their answers. And the only thing, I mean, I, I you know, one thing I did, I, I wish I asked Barrett Paul about this. We brought up well, I'll, I'll say Andrew, you know, we kept talking about the 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 um, the gay community and he kept going to the transgender community. And finally I said, it's weird you're sort of hovering in that mm-hmm. space. And he mm-hmm. said, well, that's sort of the prominent space right now is transgender youth. And then when we talked to Barrett Paul, it went also to the transgender space. And you talk to some people in the gay community and they say, but those are different issues. We we mm-hmm. have a different sexual orientation, but we are, we know who we are in our bodies. Whereas, you know, a transgender child doesn't know who they are. They, they feel like they're somebody else. But Barrett Paul, when we asked about, you know what I'm going to say? Cause I, I said something after I said, I wish I, I wish I kind of continued the conversation, but I didn't, I didn't know how to. When we talked about transgender individuals in, uh, like, you know, female sports now. Mm-hmm biologically men and i'm look am i saying this right i don't know but biological men who identify as women who are on their way to become women participating in female sports Mm -hmm. who beat women um cis women every time i I don't know i don't agree with it because i I don't understand my brain's not processing it and i don't understand yeah we're we're on the same page on that one i i absolutely disagree with with um with it completely and and i don't think we really got an answer out of barrett he just said it's it's so small of an issue it's one percent of the population that's right he basically was he it almost was like look a big huge deal is being made out of this but it's very little but if you look at what's been coming out in the news even lately it just is happening more and more like you the the runner the swimmer like they're all now women are cis women which i didn't even know what cis meant so i had to explain until he explained to me um, that cis women are coming out against having to compete. And, and my, in my mind, there's such a simple answer. Create their own category. But is there, are there enough to be in the category? I don't know, but it's definitely a so different let's, category. We didn't talk about this, but this whole thing at Target where they're creating bathing suits, um, f- female bathing suits, but for men with like a wider crotch space, to like the tuck-in. Yeah. What do this whole notion that they're using men to advertise for bras or different are they erasing women honestly it is a it's an important question yeah I because agree. where is you know it's like men have their space everywhere and we well, you know texas just passed a law too right out. texas yes. just passed a law in the session that which says, is why andrew had to leave though right andrew had to leave i know texas. which is which is so sad because andrew's you know andrew's a counselor and he he counsels LGBTQ youth, and so there was. There's only like one or two of him. So now, it's such a it's such a debate in my head. I'm like, you know, do I agree with? No, I don't agree with with you know. I don't agree with that. But I so I do don't think that biological men should be in women's sports. But I also don't want Andrew to go have to yeah move somewhere else and leave the state and all the kids that do identify as LGBTQ mm-hmm. not to have somebody to talk to again a champion. Ronnie, what I think is really interesting, and I think what makes me really happy because I think your team and and our team puts together just really great speakers because actually the things that we had people come and inter- we interviewed them about are actually there are some things that are, are very relevant in the laws that got passed this session. Mm-hmm. So if you look, uh, one is improving school safety. Yeah. So Huge. that that was there was a law passed on that uh, protecting minors on social media mm-hmm. was recently passed in the session, um, creating stronger data privacy regulations for consumers, um, combating the growing threat of fentanyl and its role in a transnational crime. Uh, Texas has really led the way on that. They really have. I mean, we re- so pr- uh, pr- prioritizing mental and behavioral health initiatives, mm-hmm. ensuring a level playing field in college women's sports. Um, there's one about prohibiting gender modification re- uh, procedures on minors. You, you saw the recent mm-hmm. uh, not a notification about Texas Children's mm-hmm. Hospital who has to mm-hmm. now stop those things. Um, the safeguarding children's innocence by ensuring reading material in public libraries is age appropriate. 
that was an interesting one. And then um, I think that's about it. There were some, yeah, so really the conversations we're having in the balanced voice yes. is very relevant to some of the things that the lawmakers are, are passing. Now, look, our values are all going to be different. Yes. Um, and so some of these things we're going to agree with and some of them we're not. Some of them we're going to think are weak and some of them we're going to be strong. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, that's why I keep telling my children too is, you know, you you have a value system that you're creating at home. We had a value system we're creating at home. And what we can't do is is dictate our value system to other, other people. people. We can share it. Mm-hmm. We may share some of the same things. We may believe certain things, but we can't criticize other people for their own value system or treat them negatively mm-hmm. because their value system is different. And so it, it, I'm not saying as a family, you have to accept what everybody else believes in, but you certainly have need to stay strong to your value system, have a reason for it, and then and then fight for those things mm-hmm. and and share those things. And maybe you come to the same place. And so it's interesting. I think there's a balance on some of these that talk about gender and sexual orientation that we just have to have a balance. People are going to love who they're going to love. Well, and I think that's okay. Of course it's okay. And I actually was when we were in California in March for spring break and I was sitting with this couple. Um she is very very liberal. He is very very conservative. They've been married forever. And they some, do a lot of work in philanthropy, am I not mistaken? They do a lot of work in philanthropy. And this issue came up about, you know, uh, LGBTQ youth and the transgender movement and what's changing. And it was so interesting. They're on opposite sides completely. Yeah. But then there was like these weird balance points where they said, you know, we we don't, we, we do think it's proper that, you know, re- reassignment, sexual reassignment is after 18. But we don't think there's anything wrong with having a transgender individual read to a child. So I thought it's, there's fluid fluidity in these conversations. And we should be able to have them with, and I'll use Andrew's word, with kindness. Yes. And we don't all have to agree, but we can still love each other. We can still be kind to each other. And I think that's always an underlying factor of all the conversations we try to have at Crime Stoppers and The Balanced Voice because it's never easy. I mean, we talk about the most difficult things happening in the world and in our communities. And so like read a book to easy. a child, yes, but talk to them about sex sex, and have well, listen, books that show sexual uh, activities. It's totally no. different for us. And my sister, my sister said, my older sister who, you know, every little sister idolizes her older sister. She said it best. She said, listen. That means my two younger sisters are <laughs> idolizing me right <laughs> they now. Do, saying. They do. It's it's so up. Thing. Well, she said, when we were growing up, we knew that our teacher's name was Mrs. Smith. Sometimes we didn't even know Mrs. Smith's first name. Now we want fifth graders and fourth graders to not only know Mrs. Smith's name, but who she wants to sleep with at night and who she wants to have sex with. What gender she wants to be with. And what gender. No, it's something we've gone. We've gone. Now, do we have to raise our children to respect everybody and respect each other? Thousand percent. Yes. But I, it's, it's just an interesting look at how the world has changed because I do look back at my teachers and I don't know any of their first names. I just know them as Mr. Yeah. or Mr. Yeah. Mrs. or Mr. whatever. The wrong people are having the right conversation. Have you ever heard that? Oh, I love that. I, I love when, when, the, when wrong the wrong people, people are, are having, having the right, right conversation. conversation. There's not a balance. It feels like the extremists are having the conversation rather than all of us being those that can have the right people having the right conversation so mm-hmm. we can create change, right? Mm-hmm. And positive change for everybody. For everybody, yeah. Voices and opinion. Yeah. And so, because we all have a value system based on, mine's based on, based on a faith. Yours may be based on something else that you're reading mm-hmm. or a concept or a theory or some di- type of ideology. But even within your faith, it's tainted, t- tainted or twisted or impacted by your culture. So you can be a right. Christian in the Arab world or Christian in the Hispanic world, and it totally could different. be totally different. Totally different. And so I, I think there's just... A place for understanding, for conversation, to have good, healthy conflict and debate where we can be honest with each other, transparent with each other, loving, and still know that we may end the conversation not coming to the same place on something. And are we okay with and that? And are we okay with that? Thank you to our sponsor, Fliplock, for making this episode possible. Fliplock is a door lock unlike any other lock that was created as a nationwide, straightforward solution to protect your people whether that be in universities, dorms, daycares, hospitals, or even government buildings. It can be added to nearly any door to keep you and yours safe. We are proud to have such a strong and like-minded sponsor of the Balanced Voice podcast. Check out Flipblock at flipblock.com. That's F-L-I-P-L-O-K.com. 
Alicia Acuna. Alicia Acuna, my oh, goodness. I love her. I love her. I have like a girl crush. I know. So she, if you recall, she is a, a Fox reporter in Denver, Colorado, whose son, her son was in the in the high school where there was an active shooter and a teacher did in fact get shot. Um, she was covering it for Fox on her own will. They told her not to go be a mom, but she said, I'm here. I might as well start talking through it. And in that moment, saw her son for the first time and the reunification, <clears throat> their embrace was was caught live on TV. And it was just very moving because you don't really see those moments raw and live. And, and then she went on to report. And so uh, she gave very few interviews. I think she said two. And one was to us. And she was amazing. You know, number one, I... I so respect her ability to just be raw and real and who she is. Like, she just was the mama. I mean, that was it. And that was first. Um, I think sometimes we, when you're in a business yet personal situation, you know, you either go this way or you go completely this way. Mm -hmm. But she was able to balance that in front of the entire world. Yeah. And and just be a mom. I mean, I, I you know, Georgie, my son goes to a military school. And every time I see him in a uniform, I'm like, oh, yeah. like I would just be like, you know, ugly crying. And so uh, just her composure of being a mom and a businesswoman and a newscaster was so amazing. And it was so real. And I think she helped us connect to the reality of this potentially happening in our own school mm -hmm. where our children go. And that was just a whole nother level of why we should care about school safety. Does that make sense? Like we all want to say it. Yeah. But when you watch that, you were just like, oh my God, this could be my kid. But how many now, I feel like we've all gotten the notice during the day. Um, we just want to inform you there's been a lockdown in the school. There was a threat made against the school. Uh, there was a crime that took place near the school. I, I think I got four of them this school year. Yeah. Four different notifications that the kids were on lockdown, not weather related, but public safety related. It is terrifying. You ask the kids and they're like, no, we just sit and stay on our phones. And, and I think how sad is it that they are living in a world where that's been normalized? Because while some maybe some are saying, we just kind of sat and waited for it to pass. There are others that that sparks incredible anxiety. And, and absolute and trauma, because yes. you never know what they've been through, too. Yes, so I know even additional trauma. You know, I, I know my son, my son's went to an international school here. And, and I think maybe this was the wrong thing to do. But I said, if anything happens at your school, you here's your plan. You go here. here. Like, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, if you know, if I'm on the phone with you, you know, I'm there and I tell you to go to a door. I don't, give, I don't care what that teacher well, says. But he won't be able to in some cases. I they know, lock them I, in the rooms. But, so that's, that's what's so, what I think is lacking too, is the parent with that, what came out of that, what I thought was substantial was educating the parents on what they're telling our children to do. Well, that's because I'm a renegade. If about. I showed up at that school, I'd be like, you get your little ass straight to that door. I'm coming to pick you up now. The shooters are over there. I'm getting my kid. But late. in reality, it wouldn't work that way. But it really, it wouldn't yeah, work. Wouldn't work that. We, and that's you one of like, the things. What is, that, what is that place they call the reunification? Center. The reunification center. We talk about that the start of every school year, and then after any horrific incident. But we talk about the school safety plan. How many of us have sat and said, "Okay, it's August. You're about to start school, or September, wherever you are." What is a school safety plan? Very they few even want to think about it. But let, what, how do we get notified? Who gets notified? Where do you, where's reunification? What if we show up to the school? What police department is responding? Right. Is it your city police? Is it the school police district? What information will be fed to us? How are our kids? I was in a school, you know, not too long ago because I'll go speak to kids sometimes or to the faculty. And I was walking through this hallway and I just noticed it was a brand new building and it was all glass. Mm. And I kept thinking in my mind, and I hate this, it's so sad, but I thought, I cannot believe they built a brand new building, all glass. I yeah. can't believe it. So when I was out of the, it was no longer with any students and I was just with the admin walking out, I said, I have to ask you, how, why did you build this all glass? She said, it's bulletproof. Oh, well, really? She stopped, she knew where I was going. She said, it's bulletproof. I love it. But it's so sad. I, I know, do it too. is sad. It is sad. I, I was very, I was so relieved for those kids, but I thought, my gosh. Like Red Dawn comes in my head. You remember, Wolverine. 
Don't you remember that movie? No. What? You know, I always think, by the way, you haven't so watched Red dream, Dawn? No. I listen Ryan, to Rue and We have Ryan to have a movie weekend. Every, mo- every morning I listen to Rue and Ryan. I'm a faithful listener. They got our Safe School Award. They're huge partners. But they always make movie references. And I'm like, God, if I ever was like with them during the day, just like I dream of being like their co host, I'd be like, don't know that movie. Sorry, don't know that movie. Is really? That terrible? Yes. Red Dawn with I Patrick was always Swayze. studying. Patrick Swayze and a learn. local Houstonian, too. Patrick Swayze. I mean, I watched Dirty Dancing. Oh. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> what? That's what we're gonna what? have to watch Red Dawn. I mean, it's, dirty it's dancing. Like, you're acting like Red Dawn is like the core of my personality. Let me Google this. Hold on. But you're acting like Dirty Dancing's not like a big deal. It is, but I wasn't. My I, was, I had a Persian father. I wasn't Dirty Dancing. I'm shit. watching. <laughs> He's from Iran. We were Red Dawning with Wolverines, baby. I don't even know <laughs> what this is. I need a picture. Hold on. 1984. I was a baby, but I did. So hurt. full of shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> give it away i hate I everybody dawn is about like getting invaded by a foreign country here in the united states on our soil and they like land at the school and and oh, these amazing the actors actor. yeah the then they fight these the kids actor. at a high school they, they high schoolers fight back and basically take their town back Ooh, i'm okay i yeah, will watch having it movie weekend i'm i i will watch it this your kids this need to watch it it's I where the i it's where i kind of got my like oh yeah i can i get a call i can <laughs> fight back and revolt you are so fun, and having you on the podcast mm. has been the most fun. Okay, for next season. Well, let's talk about these. Wait, who? Okay, go. Bobby Nonway. Oh, my gosh. So much. I'm telling you. And you know um, the movie that he contributed to. So Goya Cares is their way, uh, uh, Goya's way of uh, philanthropically supporting amazing. the issues that amazing. their schools protect children. Um, it has been amazing. They just also, they also invested and are producers of The Sound of Freedom. Jim Caviezel, who is telling the story of, of Tim from um, Operation Underground Railroad. It is going to be an amazing movie. I've already seen it. I saw the premiere in, in I think it was in New York. And it it is an amazing film. And so, and at first, you know, I have to tell you, going into that film, I thought, oh, here we're going to shoot them up. This is not really kind of how rescue and recovery happens with victims of trafficking. But it was authentic. But it was authentic because, A, it's in a foreign country. Mm-hmm. It's in countries that, you know, is don't have a law enforcement that's that's really great or it was very challenging so i literally did not i went in with one perspective came out with a totally different and loved the movie and it was very well done and so um eduardo verstegue uh helped produce it it was just amazing so hopefully you guys go see it and just know that goya is consistently they did an event with us recently kdisd goya cares yep honestly it's unbelievable we talk about the fact that our whole goal at crime stoppers is to share information obviously that's what we do um, and we create, I think, I think we create very good information and we try to do it in many different ways, a long form, like a podcast. We do quick segments on TV. We do digital assets of our own. We write blogs. We have our website. We do as much as we can think of. But Goya Cares comes in and they give us wings, organizations like ours. Yeah. When they say, we're going to put a QR code on 30 million pieces of product. I can't. I was there when that cans. idea was created, by the way. I mean, so excited. Jen. Yeah, there's a QR code on cans. I mean, so that they said under, 30 goes million their, units. Yeah. Yeah. It goes straight to their website. So and that's the conversation I had when it's first straight to the website. Goya. Just keep going. That gives you that gives safety. you information about human trafficking and sex trafficking. And so what, what and was, they're expanding and what they areas. you know, the concept was is and they've done this before, especially with like hunger and all that is bring the conversation to the table. Yeah, they're so great. It's I mean, it's because so they good. bring everybody to the table to share food so and good. share each other's culture and and it was it's just an amazing uh, they're doing an amazing job i can't I, i'm so blessed to be a part of the la familia goya la familia it. goya they, it, it's been it's been incredible to start working with them and and actually you know kind of fly on those wings and and be a, a small part of what they're doing because it's huge especially and in they're the state determined of to get our our material and our mm-hmm. curriculum they're inside of, they're helping us get them inside mm-hmm. all of Texas schools, yeah. and we started with KDISD, and that's here in Texas, and they're, they've got stuff going up on the Northeast. So it's amazing. I'm super proud of that whole initiative. YMCA, another YMCA. group we spoke to, they're wow. doing a lot. I mean, the number of kids that YMCA is looking after, and, you know, camp safety has always been a sort of touchy subject for me because we deal with some of um, some difficult issues around camp safety and mm. and gaps in camp safety or with children. Um, but Stephen Ives, I think, at the Y is really trying to close those gaps and and 
create not just a camp experience, but a holistic community experience that I think is very important. Agreed. And, you know, they've got some services that I've been talking about several times that are just unseen. People don't really know. Uh, They have an organization called YMCA International that does advocacy and uh, case management work uh, for survivors or victims of trafficking. And so it's just one of those unsung things that they do that not many people know about and super, super important when doing operations and stings Mm -hmm. with our Human Trafficking Rescue Alliance, Hatra. And uh, they're, they're just, um, they do an amazing job. More than just a gym. More than just a gym, which was where I took swimming lessons in third grade, YMCA, the local YMCA in Framingham, Massachusetts. Um, okay, next season, we're gearing up for next season. Uh, we want to know what you guys want us to talk about. I'll tell you, I have, I'm co- coming back. I've had a very tough year or two. Mm. Um, and I'm coming back with my dream lists of guests that and dream places, which I haven't told anybody about, but dream places to film the podcast next season. Um, wh- what are your dream guests and dream topics? I, I have we more share dream a couple. guests than topics, but... We have. A, I sh- we think we share a couple. Yeah, we do. Elon. Yeah. I want to know what Elon's doing with technology. <laughs> I want to know how he's going to help us with kids. We just got off the phone. So, Elon, Elon, if you're watching our podcast, you got a phone with Elon. Huh? You got a phone with Elon? No, I'm joking. Oh. (laughs) Elon and I, hold on, let me just save his name. We've been tweeting him. We have similar connections. He does respond to people. He does. He does. And I've been tagging him in some things. So, so I'm hoping him just so that he can tell us how he's going to help us with kids and the social media. The other one is I'm in love with Grizzy. Yeah. Grizzy's hood news, Mm -hmm. right? She's that. She's like that local reporter, newscast. She's all in one and and just gritty and just goes there and tells us exactly what's going on. No BS, no covering up mm-hmm. or, you know, smoothing it over for the public. It just so is raw. what it is and it's love live. Her. I love messaging her too. I don't know. She like, finds where everything is. I don't know like, how she, she finds out. Like, she listens to the, Remember when people used to like listen to the I radio? You, well, I think you can listen to Is there an app for that? I don't know. She just, she's, she's got great always coverage. There. She's always, always there. She's always there. Always there. At the biggest news stories. And then all of a sudden there, there's a big news story. Yeah. Yeah. And, and anybody that wants to mess with Grizzy has to mess with me. Ooh. Have mm. you ever met her? No, I haven't. We've she's talked to messaging. a few of our press conferences at Crime Stoppers, but I've really? never, I don't think I've ever spoken to her. I just saw her. I have so much respect just because she's so, like, she just does what she says she's going to do. And she just doesn't need, she must not have a huge budget, but I think she should get a good budget to have a staff because she just really gives the raw news truth. Um, that Those are two of my, those are two of my, I would say those places I can, sister, let's go to the south of France. and Oh, <sighs> you, you literally hit the nail on the head. We'll resume next season from the south of France. That's yes. my dream. Um, but this has been so fun. And we are, we do, again, we do this for the community. We try to pick topics that seem trending, um, trying to handle them. And we know we have very different audiences. We speak to so many different communities. And in a given day, we are we are literally touching communities that have opposite views on almost every single thing. We're trying to find balance here and and bring them to you and bring both sides right bring both sides we have opinions sometimes other times we don't sometimes we have opinions today that change tomorrow that's the beauty of an organically changing and growing conversation with two people who really care and want to grow and learn so we look forward to seeing seeing you back in the fall for season seven we're so excited and we will have some exciting guests for you guys at that time jen thank you thank you for having me thank Thank you you for for being with us yeah it's partnership and i love i love what we do and and I, I just hope that, that the community continues to rise up and engage with the, with the topics that we're talking about. I think they will. Follow us, uh, subscribe, rate, and share, please. Thank you, guys. Take care, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to today's Balanced Conversation. You can find real solutions and tangible resources in our show notes at thebalancevoicepodcast.com. To join the conversation, follow us on Instagram at thebalancevoicepodcast and on Twitter at balancevoice underscore. Stay up to date on Renya's work by following her at The Renya Report. And we can't wait to see you next week for another Balanced Conversation.